Hello everybody again. Uh, from my last video, this is kind of a follow-up on how to assemble the blast gate for your Glowforge. I was unable to find this answer when I cut this myself, so hopefully this video will help everybody else that struggle with how to assemble this also. The blast gate file from the community forum, I'll link in the description, and it is ready to cut, so you don't have to do any file editing there. You'll notice that when you download it, it will be uh, Glowforge Blastgate Sheet 1, and then there's also a Glowforge Blastgate Sheet 2. So I've just imported this into Silhouette Studio, but you can use it in whatever design program. That's just the one that I use. I'm going to show you how to assemble it. I cut mine on proof grade black acrylic. If you don't have proof grade material, that's fine. It's just um, eighth inch material. I haven't tried it in another size, so I'm not sure if you can use quarter inch. The main point is that I would suggest using it in acrylic because it's for durability and because the point of the blast gate is to help keep moisture out of the machine that's been coming in through your window that you're venting out of. So acrylic will just last longer, um, you know, because wood is porous. Once you cut this, you'll notice that actually this first piece here is two pieces. So I like to think of this as a sandwich. So I'm going to go ahead and color these two pieces brown. And then this piece, I'm going to color green. And what you'll first want to do is glue your green piece to one of your sandwich pieces. You'll want to let that glue dry first before you do the next step. Trust me, I tried it the other way. Um, maybe I'm just messy with my glue. Okay, I know I'm messy with my glue, but to save yourself the struggle of having to try to be neat with glue, which is really hard on acrylic since it's so slick, I would recommend just letting this dry first. After that's dry, insert this part, and I would recommend sliding it all the way up as far as it can go, and you'll see internally how this is working now that this lip is catching on this ledge. So that stops it from sliding all the way out of your mechanism. Slide this orange piece all the way up like that and then carefully put more glue on the top side of this green piece. Now, again, if you're messy like me, what I did was glued the bottom portion and then I put my other sandwich piece on top. And once that dried, I was able to kind of lift this top portion up a little and squeeze a little bit more glue into these contact points here. But if you are very careful with your glue and want to go ahead and glue the whole thing, just only put glue on your green portion, being very careful again to not to get any glue on your orange portion. There should ideally never be any glue that touches your orange piece because that is the piece that you are sliding up and down. And obviously if there's glue on there, it's not going to slide up and down like it needs to. Glue on your green piece and then put the sandwich piece on top. Now for your rings that come on sheet one, um, I'll go ahead and get the, sh the rings from sheet two and copy and paste those over here so we can see the difference. You'll notice that the sheet two rings are a, a more narrow diameter. The rings that come on sheet one, I'll color those blue. And what you want to do with those is glue them in a stack together. And then you'll want to take that stack and glue it to one side of your sandwich pieces of your bread. So we're going to put those both glued together, stacked, glue it to the same side. Now with your sheet two rings, I'll just color those purple. Again, you're going to want to stack and glue all of these together. And you'll want to put those on the other side. So you have a stack of two on one side and the stack of four on the other side. At this point, once all your glue has dried, then your blast gate is fully assembled. Before you try to attach it to your hose and to your Glowforge, make sure that your orange piece is actuating like it should. And now that it's all dry, the side with the two rings is what's going to slide over the port coming off the back of your Glowforge. The side with the four rings, your vent hose, is going to slide over and clamp to those four rings. So on one side with your hose, the hose is sliding over the rings, but on the Glowforge side, the rings 
will be the top portion. The rings will slide over your Glowforge port. And that's it. Your blast gate is good to go. The main, main, main point is to always make sure that your vent is open anytime that you are cutting with the Glowforge. If it is closed, obviously you will not be able to vent out your window and your room will start to get smoky and obviously smoke will come out of the lid of your Glowforge because it has nowhere else to go. If you need to set a reminder, write whatever you need to next to your flashing button to remind you to open it. I've also seen where people will write the word open somewhere down here so that that is a visual indicator that your vent is open and ready to go because if it were closed then obviously you know you wouldn't be able to see those words do whatever you need to do to remind yourself to open your blast gate before you get to cutting or you're going to have a smoky situation and just to be clear i don't mean just cutting cutting engraving scoring if you're using your glowforge make sure that your vent is opened properly if you have any other questions please drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best as always to answer them. And if anybody else assembled this and did it in a different way, let me know. Uh, this is the way I assembled mine. It works. I have no issues with any smoke or any sort of condensation getting in my machine. And that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.